Hello and welcome back to my Amateur Radio General License course. Today we're going to wrap up both safety and the course in general. Please excuse the pun. Are you ready to learn? Well, let's get started. This is the Amateur Radio General Class License course, Lesson 10, Part 2. I'm Gary Stevens, KE2GS, your instructor. This is sub-element G0. There are two exam questions from two groups of 25 questions. And this covers the 2019 through the 2023 general class uh, FCC element 3 question pool that went into effect July 1st, 2019. This section deals with electrical and uh, RF safety, uh, G0B uh, station safety, Electrical shock, safety grounding, fusing, interlocks, wiring, antenna, and tower safety. So the first question is, where do we attach fuses and circuit breakers in a device operated with a 240 volt AC signal phase source? In this illustration, we see two circuit breakers that are installed on the hot wires, or those wires that are carrying voltage. Notice that the 240 volt uh, circuit is actually derived from two different 120 volt buses. Each of these buses originates inside the breaker box, with one on the left side and the other one on the right. This illustration shows the same idea, but we're using fuses instead of circuit breakers. Fuses are generally cheaper or less expensive than circuit breakers, so you may often, uh, often uh, find them in uh, various equipment. For the exam, you need to know that the wires in a four-wire connection that should be attached to fuses and circuit breakers are only the two wires carrying voltage. The next question is, what gauge wire would we use with a 20 ampere circuit breaker? The National Electric Code has been adopted in all 50 states. It is the gold standard for safely installing electrical wiring. An internet search should render a wiring size chart for the National Electric Code. Be sure to use the, the 2021 or the current year version rather than uh, whatever pops up because it could be outdated. For the exam you need to know that according to the National Electrical Code the minimum wire sides that may be used safely for wiring a 20 amp circuit breaker is AWG number 12. The next question is what size of fuse or circuit breaker can we install in a circuit that uses AWG number 14 wiring? If we look at the chart that we googled before, a 14 gauge wire is rated at 15 amps. So for the exam we need to know that the appropriate size fuse or circuit breaker that we should install with a circuit that uses the AWG number 14 wiring is 15 amps. So the next question is, why is it a bad idea to run a gasoline fuel generator inside an occupied space? I honestly hope you know the answer to this without me telling you. And if you don't, it's because it can kill you. Gasoline, uh, when it burns, generates carbon monoxide, which is a, a poison that you can't see or smell. Some of the signs of uh, carbon monoxide are headaches, nausea, breathlessness, collapsing, uh, craziness, or loss of consciousness. If you notice anybody near a generator that's experiencing these signs, you should probably stop the generator and then call 911. Am and for saving your life or somebody else's, you should know that the primary reason for not placing a gasoline fuel generator inside an occupied area is the danger of carbon monoxide poisoning. The next question is, what would cause a ground fault circuit interrupter or GFCI to disconnect a 120 or a 240 volt AC power line from a device. 
fault uh, interrupters or breakers work by detecting improper electrical flow, aka a ground fault, and it shuts down the power and prevents injuries and fires. For the exam, you need to know that a condition that will cause a ground fault circuit interrupter, or GFCI, to disconnect the 120 or 240 volt AC line power to a device is current flowing from one or more of the voltage carrying wires directly to ground. The next question is what is covered by the National Electric Code? The key word, of course, is our key words actually is the National Electric Code. However, because we're not electricians, we're only concerned with the parts that uh, regards with regards to uh, amateur radio and safety inside of our uh, ham shacks. So for the exam, we need to know regarding amateur radio, what is covered by the National Electric Code is electrical safety inside the ham shack. Our next question is what safety choices should be observed when climbing a tower using a safety belt or a harness? There are basically two types of harnesses. There's a, a belt and an actual harness harness. Um, and the use uh, depends upon the application. The important things to know about a belt, uh, particularly when purchasing or before using one, is that it is an ANSI standard belt and that it conforms to the rated weight of the climber and it, uh, it's within its usable service. So you need to observe the date codes. For the exam, we need to know the safety choice we should be observing when climbing a tower using a safety belt or a harness is to confirm that the belt is rated for the weight of the climber and is within the allowable service life. The question is, what should we do if we are preparing to climb a tower that supports electrically powered devices? This is another question that should be intuitively obvious, but if it isn't, make sure that the power uh, devices are turned off. Therefore, for the exam, you need to know if you were preparing to climb a tower that supports electrically powered devices, make sure all circuits that are supplying power to the tower are locked and tagged out. Next question is where should we install an emergency generator? We learned in a previous slide we never run it in an enclosed space. Uh, it should be at least uh, 20 feet away from the home and we always want to direct the exhaust away from the home. For the exam, we need to know that when installing an emergency generator, the generator should be located in a well-ventilated area. Next question is, what is the danger of soldering with lead tin solder? Other than breathing the fumes of the solder, it's made from lead, and lead can contaminate our hands when we're touching it. So you need to wash your hands after touching it, or else it can contaminate your food. For the exam, you need to know that a danger from lead tin solder is that lead can contaminate food if the hands are not washed carefully after handling the solder. Next question is, what is a good practice for lightning protection grounds? From this illustration, you can tell that there's a common grounding cable or a grounding bus. So the good practice is to connect everything to the same grounding point or bus. The exam, you need to know that a good practice for lightning protection grounds is that they all must be bonded together with all other grounds. The next question is, what is a power supply interlock? This simple circuit illustrates a uh, interlock. So imagine the switch is connected to a cabinet lid or a drawer uh, that when it opens, it, it uh, opens the switch. So normally the lamp would be uh, illuminated unless you open the cabinet or uh, open the, uh, the lid. Uh, a power supply could substitute for the lamp. 
For the uh, exam, you need to know the purpose of a power supply interlock is to ensure that the dangerous voltages are removed if the cabinet is opened. The next question is, what must we do before powering our house from an emergency generator? The answer is we need to disconnect it from the incoming power lines. And the reason we need to do that is because uh, backfeeding a uh, power line from your generator could be dangerous to the work crews. There are several ways to do this and the most popular or, uh, ways to do this is with transfer switch or an uh, interlock uh, kit. For the exam you need to know that when powering your house from an emergency generator you must disconnect it from the incoming utility power feed question is what precautions should we take whenever we need to adjust or repair an antenna? The first thing we should do is we should make sure that our rig is powered off. And the best way to ensure that it's powered off is to unplug it from the power source. And we should probably disconnect the antenna from any switches or the rig that it's connected to just to make sure that there's no danger of radiation. For the exam you need to know that whenever you adjust to repair your antenna, turn off the transmitter and disconnect the feed line. This concludes Lesson 10 Part 2. By now I hope you're eager to take the exam soon and have the confidence that you need to pass it with flying colors. Be sure to take plenty of practice exams online, and when you consistently reach a score of 85 percentile or better, you're good to go. Well, until next time, never stop learning.